Dubai Channel Weekly on this week's show. Luke, hang on a second. Mm. What on earth have you been up to this weekend? You look terrible. Well, this week's show comes live from the Bulldog Bash. It's a drag strip behind us. And um, what can I say? The Bulldog Bash broke me. <laughs> Dear. Mummy. are open all night, I think it's time for an orange cider. Well, you use the words intense, immense, quite a lot. Awesome. It did look fantastic, but you've had no sleep. Look at you, you're ruined. I'm What's a... orange cider? What is that? I, I, I think I might have hallucinated about the orange cider. No, it was real, I'm pretty sure. It was, uh, yeah, mess with your head, let's put it that way. But, and yeah, your hair. And my hair. <laughs> and my skin complexion. <laughs> uh, it's been an incredible three or four, is it four days, three days, whatever. It's just been awesome. I just, yeah, I'm just broken. So, coming up on this week's show. Well, we know we promised you that we'll be covering fast bikes racing in the No Budget Cup, but unfortunately we have a slight technical issue, so we decided to nip off to Sicily instead to test out the brand new Ducati Monster 1100 Evo, and guess what? Ali from Fast Bikes was there to lend a hand. We've also got footage from Dane Kelly Holmes taking her CD2. I'll be test riding the KTM SMC 690, an insane supermoto machine. And finally, by popular request, Luke reviews the Triumph Thunderbird Storm. So, first up, we got invited out to Sicily from Ducati to test out their brand new 1100 Monster Evo. And luckily for us, Ali from Fast Bikes was there to lend a hand. And he also took us for a little tour at Mount Edna. Edna. Edna? Fast Bikes, we're here with Bike Channel and Ducati for the launch of the brand new uh, Monster Evo 1100. Um, a host of changes, uh, different suspension, first 100 horsepower engine for a Desmond Due, uh, new wheels, new exhaust, new styling. So, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're going to go up Mount Etna. I uh, hope she doesn't erupt, and uh, we'll tell you more about it later on.
Hi Groovers, we've just uh, spent the last hour riding the new Monster Evo 1100. Um, first impressions, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, so that's the case really. Little tweaks here and there have made a massive improvement. Um, there's obviously new traction control system, uh, new ABS and their safety pack, which is obviously an improvement. Um, new forks, not much a massive difference, but there's, uh, they're fully adjustable. The new wheels also make the, uh, the handling nice and nimble and light. The engine, there's a new cylinder head and new flywheel and new cam lift, which makes it rev much harder and much more of a, uh, more of a top end. It's still a little bit lumpy below 30, 30 miles an hour in first and second gear when you're in town, but apart from that, the engine's really nice uh, and really tractable. And in fact, the rear mechanical grip, we haven't had the traction control kicking in much at all, so we'll have to test that out later on. Um, so yeah, we're going to spend the rest of the day riding around Etna. Uh, we're not that far from Libya and there's loads of ice on the road, so uh, what else can go wrong? Again, we spent the, uh, the whole day riding the new Monster 1100 Evo, and it's really impressive. I mean, it's basically got a little bit sportier, but without sacrificing uh, some of the, the easy riding, welcome to Ducati family type stuff. Sure, it's a little bit clunky in town still, that stereotypical Ducati uh, first, second gear, where you always have to keep your finger over the clutch. But as soon as the roads open up and everything's a bit more flowing, then the bike comes into its own. I personally like what they've done with the styling, the, uh, the lack of exhaust at the back and um, put the cannons at the bottom. It's made these, just the rear end much tidier and a lot smarter. In terms of handling, it's still got that real light flickability and nimble handling and the engine's a lot better in my opinion. It's lost a little bit of drive at the bottom and, and mid-range, uh, some of the oomph, but uh, in top end wise it's got a massive difference. It revs harder, longer and it's got a better top end. So. Overall, it's priced under £9,000, so when you look at its rivals, FZ8, um, other bikes like that, it really is quite competitive. And also, we have obviously got the track control and ABS and all the other kit, and for that sort of money, it really is a good price. So, overall, very impressed. Scenery around Mount Edna looked yeah, pretty impressive. Right. Geography's not my strong point, alright? Edna, 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 Edna. Potato, tomato, tomato. Well, it's a little bit blonde in you, so we'll forgive <laughs> you on that. Uh, so, anyway, that bike did look incredibly impressive. We're actually going to be taking it out on UK roads for a full review very shortly, and you're going to be taking out its baby brother. Yeah, well, I like to call it the middle monster child. Yeah, the 796. Do you remember the monster mash dance? Yeah, get the mash. Yeah, alright, that's that. Get the mash! I feel a bit of a challenge coming on, and it's not the singing one though, so I mean, to go with that Ducati Monster face off. Uh, and to all the challenges, we put someone very special for the CBT this week's part of the Get On campaign. Yeah, Dane Kelly Holmes, let's see how she got on. Hi, I'm Kelly Holmes, and I'm here with the Get On campaign to have a go at my CBT. I'm going to be learning to ride one of these uh, for the first time ever on a gear bike. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm a bit nervous, of course, because it's the first time I've ever actually done something like this, but for me, I think it's going to be fun. You know, I just want to get out on the roads. Um, sometimes I'm so frustrated with the traffic. You see the guys on their bikes going past, and I want to be one of them. So let's see what happens, but I'm really looking forward to the day. I've just had my safety brief in, they've told us what we've got to wear. I've got all of my gear on, I've got my protection, uh, my jacket, I've got my gloves, and now they're going to show us around the bike, so I'm really excited. I'm a bit nervous because I've never done this before, but very, very excited. First things first, you don't need strength to operate any of the controls on a motorcycle. When we're using the controls today, I want to see both hands on the handlebars, all right? I don't want any thumbs coming off like that and waving. All right, everyone happy with that? Cool. Help me some gloves on for me then please folks. 
training and I'm going on my first bike ride. Um, I'm really looking forward to it but I am petrified <laughs> so I just hope that uh, we can get round, I can remember everything and uh, we'll see what happens later. Say congratulations! Oh, thank Successfully you. completed the CBT. <laughs> thank you very Wonderful. much. Wonderful. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was really cool. I loved it. Me, my signature, my number. All I need mm -hmm. is your signature in that box there for me, please. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Right, so congratulations. Oh, I've just successfully completed my CBT, and I'm so chuffed. I wasn't really sure, um, you know, when I first came here, whether it be something that I'll just do the CBT, be really happy with that or want to take it on further. And I've definitely made up my mind that I want to go all the way. So I think it's a theory test next and then hopefully pass my full license. Um, I've had a lot of fun and you know, the thrill of going on two wheels is definitely what I expected. If you want to have a go, go to geton.co.uk for a free lesson. And who knows, you might enjoy it as much as I did and want to take it on. Hey, she did really well, didn't she? She's never been on a bike before. I'm well impressed. Thumbs up to the girls. Yeah, man, congratulations, Dame Kelly Holmes. You've got your CBT. You can now go out riding on one, two, five bike of your choice. <laughs> Pretty cool. Right, though, up next, my review of the KTM SMC 690, one of the most insane bikes I've ever ridden. It's a super moto machine meant for the road, and it's a lot of fun. Check this out. Welcome to Sandown Park. We're here for the races today. No, not all the posh people in dresses over there with all the GGs running around in a circle. We're here for the Daytona Racetrack, a very apt, very cool go-karting track for us to have some fun on this, the KTM SMC 690. Now, when I say this bike puts a grin on your face, I'm not exaggerating. Don't believe me? Check this out. See, I told you it was fun. Now, uh, let's give you some stats on it. This beastie costs 6,800 pounds, which, to be honest with you, is quite a lot of money for the minimalistic styling and everything you get with it. First up, it's a super moto bike. If you want a bike to be doing hundreds of miles on the motorway, to be commuting in the wet, to be a bit of a workhorse, this really isn't the bike for you. But this is one of the most fun and insane machines I've ever ridden. The way I describe it is it's a BMX bike with an engine. And let me break it down on exactly why it is so fun. First up, it's minimal. You have the raw basics of what you need on a motorbike. Forget fairings, forget traction control, forget anything fancy you might get on a sports bike or a Toro or a commuter. You literally have two wheels, a single cylinder engine, some great brakes and suspension, and that's it. The open road. And you know what? 
That's just fine for me. That single cylinder engine is 654 cc, produces 63 brake horsepower and about 48 pound foot of torque, which is pretty impressive when you consider this bike weighs in at just under 140 kilos. And that's the secret. They've kept it light, it's kept it minimum to make it maximize its handling and the acceleration feeling you get on it. This thing will pop in first, in second. Hell, you could probably pop it in third if you wanted to. From the lights, it just wants to lift up. It's got so much instant torque that you'll love. The handling is spot on. It took a bit of a while for me to get used to it because it's not fed, it's not a sports bike, you don't really have the confidence to chuck it in straight away. But once you do, the WP suspension, the extra travel you get on that kind of long suspension front arms you've got on the front just makes such a difference. It's immense. You've got Brembo brakes on it as well, so it stops on a dime. You've got the Supermoto tyres. These are tubeless ones with steel rimmed uh, wheels. That makes it lighter, and the grip you get from those tyres is insane. I mean, you really do go into corner and just think, okay, I can push it in a little bit more, a little bit more, and you just keep on going. And the buzz you get coming out of that corner with that single cylinder engine, which just gives you power in clumps up to 8,000 RPM is insane. I'd love to take on a sports bike on this because you probably enjoy it more. Yeah, you'll be faster on a sports bike, you'll get tighter lines than this, but this is the perfect machine to go out on a Sunday blast, terrorise small villages, head up into the countryside, or even commute through town. If you've got like a nice 20, 30 mile commute into London or a city, this is perfect. It's so narrow, it fits through traffic. And now obviously being a KTM, as I mentioned, you do get some quality components. I think Ducati are the only other company that can really match them for the kind of kit they put on their bikes. Mentioned the Brembo brakes, mentioned the WP suspension. You also get a slipper clutch on this. It's not the most effective, uh, you still do feel a bit of the old engine braking, but it's nice to have it on there. And obviously being KTM, there are a million of accessories you can get for this. Tank bags, saddle bags, heated grips. It's, this has actually got the KTM kind of uh, label grips on it. Clothing range. It's a lifestyle almost. And I think the whole supermoto thing is that. It's something I've not been involved with heavily before. I'm much more of a, a race bike man or you know a road bike. I love my cruisers as well. But this has just blown me away. Supermotos probably one of the most fun bikes you'll ever ride. Just want to say a very quick thank you for Daytona Motorsport, the guys who let us use their phenomenal track here in the middle of Sandown Park racetrack. Uh, it's a brilliant place. Come down and check it out if you get a chance. And uh, we've had a lot of fun on the KTM SMC 690 today. And in fact, the whole week I've been riding it. But uh, time to go and have some more fun because over there in the race stand are loads of posh chicks in fancy frocks. And I reckon I should go chat them up. Yeah. <laughs> I love horse racing. <laughs> Why didn't you take me? I could have got a fascinator. Yeah, the reason I didn't take you is what the hell's a fascinator? I don't know. That it's stuff. like um, jewels, feathers, you know, on like a band or a clip. Like Do you a not hat? see the royal wedding? I did All see. Sorts of ones. <laughs> I did see bits of the royal wedding. I saw Kate Middleton's sister. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a good shot. No, Otherwise, she didn't wear a fascinator. What, yeah, hatty type thing. Well, look, you should have taken me, alright? Well, alright, next time we'll take you when we go horse racing, okay? But anyway, the KTM SMC 690, brilliant little bike, absolutely love it. Raw as hell, but still blew me away and absolutely insane. Immense and intense. Immense, amazing, intense, all of the three combined. But I'll tell you what, there's a bike that I liked even more to try and find the best store. Word, man, and welcome to one of the most iconic places in British biking history is the Ace Cafe in North London. Just look around you, man. It, it's inspirational being here. You've got cuttings on the walls from when all the mods and rockers used to kick off down in Brighton. They used to meet here before heading down there. You've got some incredible old bikes, the Triumph, actually. Ace Cafe Thruxton Special over there, which is kind of that because, you know, you can see the Ace Cafe, iconic British biking brand. Triumph, iconic British biking brand. And we are testing the latest Triumphs today. They brought out a brand new Thunderbird Storm, the full up to last year's incredibly successful on a bike. I ranted and raved about being so good to Thunderbird. Bird. and uh, we've got it sitting out there for you. I mean, you know, I suppose I could show it to you and everything, especially because it's had loads of cosmetic changes. Do you want to have a look? Yeah? Teaser? I'm such a tease, aren't I? Go on, show him, go on. It's a bit unfair. What now?
So here she is, after all that teasing, you finally get to feast your eyes on the brand new Thunderbird Storm for 2011. And well, the first thing we've got to address is what's the difference between this and the standard Thunderbird that came out last year? And to be honest, you blew me away. A lot of it's cosmetic, but first we'll start with some mechanical stuff. It's got the big bore kit. Standardly, this is 1600cc. They've added the big bore kit on, gives you an extra 100cc and an extra, I think, 12 brake horsepower, taking up to about 97 bhp. Keeps the figures of torque around the same, 115 pound per foot, which is a lot. And as I say, the rest of it's mainly cosmetic. You can look at the new set handlebars, you're looking at the matte black finishing, the kind of springs, the risers, everything like that. Still got really good brakes, still got a really nice display here with your kind of like fuel gauge, range, everything else on there. Um, yeah, and those are the changes. So it costs about an extra grand. And you might be thinking, well, it doesn't seem like quite a lot. Is it just a rehash that they're bringing out? No, it really, really does work. I think cosmetically and styling-wise, it looks great. All the matte black finish on it. Look, honest, look at it. It looks beautiful, man. It, it looks better if I'm giving you my opinion than most uh, Harleys I've seen. And that little bit of extra performance in the engine, it's superb. One thing I would say though is this, this you get some nice looking cans, exhaust on it, and uh, if I've got the key on me, I might even try starting out for you to show you uh, exactly what it sounds like. But I would say, you want to get some cans aftermarket ones on it, because it can sound amazing. My old Thunderbird that I was test riding last year, I put some cans on it and it sounded like uh, a machine gun spitfire. Boom, 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 boom. Let's have a listen to this now. Still doesn't exactly sound bad, does it? Now, uh, we're talking about the engine, 1700cc with that big ball kit added. It's a parallel twin, so it delivers a power slightly differently to a V-twin. And one of the biggest things about this bike is just overall how smooth it feels. It's damn fast, it's damn powerful, but at no point does it really feel like it's kind of tearing your head out because it's so well balanced and the chassis and handling are amazing, honestly amazing for a cruiser. Don't be wrong, it's a big bike, you're still going to have to plan your corners ahead and you're not just going to be able to chuck it around town in traffic too much, although we did go out in London quite a bit and you saw that it wasn't too bad as a commuter, but having like the double this side front brakes they've got, I mean the brakes on this are great, which is what you need when you've got a bike that is this quick and powerful and when you accelerate you can actually feel the whole thing lift up. Now bikes to compare this to, uh, for instance coming in around the same price a little bit more, Harley Fat Bob. I'm not going to lie, okay, obviously Harley brand, uh, a lot of people have a lot of attachment to it and I understand it, I always think of them as the attractive girl at school who got away with being really attractive when she was younger, got everything she wanted and then when she's 35, 40, hasn't developed enough of a personality to continue, you know, to be an interesting person. Whereas the Harleys look great and are amazing, but nowadays British bikes, the victory bikes, have come on with so much more charisma and personality and a modern and fast and brilliant and that's what I love about bikes. But. I also acknowledge that if you're buying a cruiser, you might just want to sit at 30 miles an hour looking cool, hence why you have the Harleys. But anyway, yes, yeah, so compared to the Fat Bob, it's a lot more powerful. It's about the same torque and BHP as the Victory, but comes in at, what, two and a half, three thousand pounds less. I think the finish on this is a little bit better. You could look at the uh, Suzuki M1800R Intruder and say, well, that offers 125 brake, bit more torque, and it's, you know, 10,000 pounds, grand and a half less, but it doesn't have the tradition of the Triumph, it doesn't have the kind of build quality and it's mostly made of plastic even though it is a damn good bike. In other words, what I'm ranting and raving about here is this thing is blooming incredible. Seriously, Triumph have not only designed what I consider to be a Harley beater, but it's one of the best cruisers on the market at the moment. Uh, if I had to choose between this and the Victory Hammer S, one of my favourite cruisers, that's 14 and a half grand, this is 11 and a half. I know I'd want to put some cans on this, so you're looking at about 12 and a half realistically. It's still two grand cheaper than the Victory, and I mean the way to compare them, the Victory Hammer S to me is like a Dodge Charger, a muscle car. Well, this is like a Jaguar E-Type, a bit of British class. It's smooth, it's serene, and my God, it looks great. Triumph. Not only I think you've designed a Harley Beat, so you've made a bike that's made me very, very happy. So in other words, I think you could say I blooming well love this bike. I've had a wicked day riding around London and everywhere today. Thanks to everyone at the Ace Cafe for letting us come up here and film at such an iconic location. But uh, enough chatter. I like this bike so much, I just want to get back out on it and go riding. So don't forget, go to bikechannel.com for all your latest bikes, news, reviews and everything else updated daily. And I'll catch you soon. I'm not saying that being at the Ace Cafe has gotten in my head, but let's go find some mods! Woo! Oh, what a lovely 
lovely tour of London. Oh man, and what a machine to do it on. That Triumph Thunderbird Storm, honestly, is a very, very special bike. And it seemed fitting to take up to the Ace Cafe, obviously synonymous with the Triumph brand. Thanks for everyone there for letting us come up and film. We had a wicked day there, and uh, we even managed to blag a few free coffees. You love a freebie. Oh, I love a free coffee. It tastes so much better. Yeah, so true. Talking of freebies, I do believe it's competition time. MCE, the title sponsors of the British Superbike Championship, very kindly given us two weekend tickets to any BSB round of your choice to attend. Plus, they're going to give you a lap in the Nissan GTR safety car as well. So all you've got to do is answer this question. Who was the winner in last week's shootout? Was it the Nissan GTR or the BMW S1000RR? To win this amazing prize, what you've got to do is send us your answer to com at bikechannel.com. So we've come to the end of another Bike Channel weekly episode extravaganza. I'm devastated, but not actually that much. No, you need some sleep, yeah, boy. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to go home and recover my broken soul. Maybe get like a little face pack on, a couple holics, get a good night's sleep. Some cucumber on the eyes, yeah, I think that's exactly what I need. Or hair conditioning mask. Yeah, that's going a little bit too far. <laughs> Fascinating, huh? No, yeah. I still don't know what that is. <laughs> anyway, uh, before I do scoot off and pack up the bikes in a motorhome and uh, go back home and sleep and cuddle my dog, um, <laughs> let's find out what's coming up on next week's show. It's challenge time. Luke and I take out two of the market-leading scooters and see how far we can get on a gallon of petrol. Plus, we'll be bringing you extended highlights of the amazing last four days at the Bulldog Bash and find out exactly why I am indeed so broken. And Finally, we review the latest bike sat nav from TomTom. Tom. <laughs> Let it out. I'm so broken. Let it all out. I need sleep.